Dr. Romano doing some RNS stereochemistry problems that a lot of our students have trouble with. Hi, I'd like to go over a few questions with you that students are having trouble with doing RNS, especially for the DAT. But I just noticed that we have our in house mathematics expert, Scala Mustafa Karmouni, and maybe he can come over and maybe he can help us do some RS chemistry. Professor Mustafa, can you help us solve these? Sure, Dr. Romani, you're asking the wrong person. The only thing I'm good at, numbers, trig, stats, and physics. I'll leave you to do this. I'm done. I'll all right. In a minute. Well, I, I was hoping Professor Mustafa could do it for us, but all he thinks about is numbers, so you have me. I want to go over six questions that is going to help you do the DAT and be able to hit these questions at lightning speed. Let's look at question number one. Whenever you do an RS configuration on a molecule, you want to make sure you have a chiral carbon, which means there's four different groups. As you can see from here, we have a chiral carbon right here, so I'll put a little dot. What I want to do is assign what we call the group priorities based on the atomic number. So the bromine is group number one. The, uh, the group here, which is a propyl group, that's priority number two. The methyl is number three, and the hydrogen is number four. What you want to do is you want to connect number one to two. And as you can see, there's no one connection here, but I could jump over number four. Now, if number four has what we call a dash, that means you're in the correct frame of reference. So what I do is I jump over four, and I can see the configuration is going clockwise. That means this configuration is an R. If it's an R, that means it's an antima would be an S. Let's go to number two. I do the same thing. The bromine is one, the ethyl is two, this is three, and this is four. Notice our position on number four is good because it's a dash. So once again, if it's a dash, that means you're in good position and therefore you connect one to two. This time I don't need to jump over four. I can connect one to two and therefore the configuration or the arrangement of atoms in the space is said to be of the S configuration. Problem number three, be careful of. The OH group is number one because oxygen has a greater atomic number than carbon. Ethyl is two, methyl is three, uh-oh. Look at number four now. Group number four, which is the key group, has what we call a wedge. That means you're in the wrong frame of reference. So whatever you think the answer is, reverse it. So you would think the answer is gonna be an R, but because number four has a wedge, it's the opposite, and this is an S. Those first three most students have an easy time with. Here's the hard one. Now, what would happen if we had a problem like this and we numbered the priorities? We have one, two, three, and four. In a situation like this where group number four has nothing on it, there's no dash, there's no wedge. The best way to do a problem like this, as I teach my students, is we're gonna rewrite this. Now, when I rewrite it, I need two interchanges. Let's do it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to interchange group number four with wherever the dash is. And as you can see, the dash is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to interchange these two groups. Now, watch me very carefully. All I'm going to do is just switch these two groups. So I switch the phenyl and I switch the hydrogen. Once I did that, I need to switch any two groups. I always like to switch the two groups that have no dash and no wedge on it. So I'm gonna switch these two groups. So when I do that and I switch these two groups, I'm now ready to kill. There's group one, there's group two, there's group three, there's group four, and therefore we get the final answer of an R configuration. So. To recap, if group number four has nothing on it, you have to make two interchanges. The first interchange, I switch group number four wherever the dash is, and then I interchange any other two groups. I always pick the two groups that have no stereochemical designator on it. So that was these two groups. To recap now for some, some summary, look at number five. Well, the first thing I would do is this is a chiral carbon here. So the amine group is number one. Now be careful, who would be number two? 
this carbon, this is a carbon, and this is a carbon. So we're comparing these two. This carbon has two H's on it and another carbon, where this has a carbon with an O. So that would take priority over this. And I hope you can see we go from one to two. Since number four has a dash, that's going to be a correct frame of reference. And therefore, this is the R configuration. The last problem, we're going to do two things. I want the IUPAC name. Now, we've got to be a little careful of this. We all know that this is going to be carbon number one because this is a cyclohexanol. What I would recommend you to do in a ring is to take this off the ring. So this is carbon one, and attached to this is the OH, and therefore the hydrogen is a dash. You have this path going this way. I'll call that R1. You have this path going this way, I'll call that R2. The OH is number one. This path is worth more than this path because it's a chlorine. So this is two, this is three, and this is four. Going over four, we see that we have a one R. Likewise, we're going to now go to the third carbon, and we're going to look at the stereochemistry. We have a chlorine, then we have an H, then we have this path going up, I'll call that R1, and this path going off to the side, R2. Chlorine is number one. The path going up reaches the carbon with the OH faster, so that would be two. This is three. Uh-oh, four has a wedge on it. You think it's an S, but you switch your thoughts, and therefore it's going to be an R. So putting it all together now, how would I name this? This compound would be called 1R, 3R. Notice I put the stereochemical designator in front, and I would say 3 chloro, no number because it's a ring alcohol, cyclohexanol. So we get a 1R, 3R, 3 chloro cyclohexanol. Before I end, what if I had a 1S, 3S, 3-chlorocyclohexanol? Then that would be an enantiomer of this molecule. But if I had a 1R, 3S, 3-chlorocyclohexanol, then that would be a what? I hope you said a diastereomer. I hope you get an idea. We have a lot of these questions in the Dat Destroyer book which I do go over. I'll be doing some Fisher notation and some Newman in the next lecture. But this should give you a good idea on how to do the 3D. If you need further practice on this, I absolutely love the David Klein book. Kids are always asking me about that. Um, I also like McMurray, Wade. I like um, the Jones book. I also like the Bruce book. So they're all good textbooks, but the easiest one I think is the David Klein book. Well, I hope that um, gives you a good idea of what to do. So I will say good day to you guys.